Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, folks, looking good, feeling good. We have on the line today Rich Anderson. And, Rich, uh, we've been uh, talking about the soybean market for the last couple of days, and we uh, have a big report coming up pretty soon. You want to tell us what the folks are looking at uh, as they go through these things? Well, the report is a week from today. It's next Friday. Mm -hmm. And it's going to show the uh, planning intentions, which, you, you know, uh, over the years, I've always said when they start, the farmer starts put his his money in the ground, plants the seed. That's when the markets tend to start to catch and hold and uh, mm -hmm. go the other way more times than not. And they also show the supply and demand both of the United States and globally. It's uh, kind of interesting to note. I think the last time I was on your show was the, the last Tuesday in February, and I talked about the USDA forum and how they would magically add 3.4 million acres to the total planted acreage with their magic wand. And I think that kind of confused you and a lot of people. And I was wrong. They only added 3.34 million acres. Mm -hmm. But now we have to see if the farmer is actually able to uh, turn the wheels and get a foot in the ground and find enough ground to put all this into. Basically, that's going to be the challenge, and that's going to depend on the weather. Um, but yeah, so they, they, I, I believe that the supply and demand, both U.S. and globally, is going to show that, you know, you've got to have a great crop in the United States again this year. It's interesting to note that the Ukraine acreage has probably been cut back a little over 3 million acres, obviously, with the war and various other things. You know, getting stuff planted over there is a, a challenging, to say the least. And then we have the bumper crop in South America, which um, there's actually been rumored to be three cargoes of uh, soybeans being shipped from Brazil into the east coast of the United States. They think they might be um, some special soybeans, but we'll see. And then it sounds like Argentina is going to be importing beans from Brazil because 72 percent of their crop is poor to very poor, and only 2 percent of it is good excellent and you know mm -hmm. it's they've had a real crop problem down there so it, it's going to be very interesting that you the wheat i think you see it got a little bit of a, a rally here today well that's that's the rumors that russia's saying well it's cheap and so maybe uh it's it's cheap enough and we're going to tell people to we're going to stop exports or at least limit the exports and that was enough to get people to cover we're, we've got the macro override you know the money flows and the interesting thing that i read is that for the week ending 315 the banks have borrowed from the new lending facility that uh, you know the fed has decided to come up with where you could give them bonds for 70 cents and they'll give you back a dollar you know sounds mm -hmm. like a great deal but they've actually borrowed in that last week more money for that week than any week in the 2008 great financial crisis. Yeah, that I know that. You, there's, there's, there's some strain. There's some strain there, Larry, and there's no yeah, question yeah, about it. Yeah. And in 08, basically, the, the managed money got out of the market, the index funds got out of the market, and the commercial coverage, <laughs> everybody just you know went to duck. And um, so we, we've got to keep that in mind, but as long as you uh, use your technicals and, and manage your risk intelligently, you'll be just fine. But, yeah, there, there could be some real uh, curveballs, and, yeah. and then there may not be. But, uh, you know, this is just what the government's opinion is of how much is going to be planted. And then they're going to use trend line yields. And, of course, you know, we don't always go to trend lines. Sometimes, uh, well, 
you know, sometimes you have a real crop problem. And with all the mm-hmm. moisture that, that's been dropping in California, sure reminds me of uh, that one time out in Pismo Beach and when you had the big rain and they had to flood the house. And, <laughs> yeah. and, and that summer, you know, yeah. they, they got the crops off to a good start, but then all of a sudden the faucet turned off. And by yeah. the way, you know, Brazil, the, Brazil's counting on their corn. They're focused on exporting beans right now, but they're counting on their second corn crop. They harvest the beans and they put in a second corn crop. But a lot of that's been put in late. And seasonally, you know, you you want to get it in early because late, then it gets too hot and and then you don't have quite as good a crop. And then uh, often the rains stop. And so, the, you know, their crop is going to, April's going to be a time to be watching the weather very closely down in Brazil. And Argentina's just been through the toughest part of it. Uh, and the other country that we're watching for this year for weather is going to be Australia. With El Nino there, it could affect their uh, moisture in the Australian wheat crop. So Rich, we've got a question from one of our look. listeners. And when will, the, when will the planning be done for corn and also for beans? Well... Uh, Southern part first, of the first of the we states first is, we yeah. got to get the snow melted, <laughs> then we got to get the ground. <laughs> there, well, you're gonna have to wait for the Fourth of July snow. for that. They're calling it Snow Mountain up at the uh, up at the mall. You know, mile from my house. <laughs> and, oh. and then, you know, so you got to get the snow melted, then you got to get the ground on thaw, and 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 then uh, so basically um, April through the first middle of May. That's that you know. The, the USDA, um, if you want crop insurance, you have to plant within certain windows, or you're not given your you know, you don't get your crop insurance, and so it's it's it, things are very regulated this year. And, and by the way, if you look at the uh, crop insurance prices, are you know that's based on the average price in February, right? And and back then uh, prices were quite a bit higher than they are now, so you know they've got some in the money puts, shall we say? Um, you know, so they'll still be making their decisions based on the, the crop insurance price. And so you darn well plan it mm-hmm. during the windows that the USDA has. Uh, yeah, sure, they're they're probably down in the in the south starting to plant stuff. But in Iowa, Minnesota, uh, Wisconsin, Illinois, you know, things have got to warm up. You kind of want the ground to be above a certain temperature before you're putting that seed in the ground. Otherwise, they'll just sit there and, and do nothing for a couple of weeks, and mm-hmm. that doesn't optimize your uh, seed germination, to say the least. Hey, listen, that's pretty good, buddy. Listen, I'm thank you for coming on today. I know it was a spur of the moment, but by gosh, we love hearing from you. And uh, thanks for calling us uh, last night to uh, give us a heads up because we had an order to buy beans, and and uh, it was going to be a little tricky, and you said, go for it. And by golly, it did exactly what you said. It opened lower and rallied the rest of the day. So many thanks yeah, for that. It, but, it's uh, looking good, man. It's looking yeah, good. So. so far it is anyway. See. Yeah, that's it, you folks. Put your stops uh, in. You, hey, keep those stops working because if you don't put a stop in, you're telling Mother Market that uh, – you don't know what you're doing, know what she's doing, and you certainly want to do that. We'll be right, right back. You folks. have a great weekend. Hey, thank you. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors 
Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters Letters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Free at one eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight. Internationally at seven two seven eight seven three seven six one eight. Okay, folks, I want to go through this uh, soybean trade that we did uh, for the 24-7 group. Uh, we had a beautiful 61% retracement down here at uh, uh, 12, uh, 1292. Okay, so we put a buy in at 12.92 and we put a 10 cent stop in. Folks, it came within one and three quarters cents of an actual stopping us out and then has reversed and has since made about $600. Now, what we've done is it's still early in the day, so we put our stop at break even now. So the worst possible scenario is that you break even. Yeah, you don't make any money, but uh, you don't want to lose any, and that's the whole key. And you can see that big, strong downtrend that we have here. Uh, we were joking, Rich and I, because uh, he heard the order because he, he follows what I'm doing. And he said, I like that order. And he says, but you know, he said, they're going to probably open it lower, which they did. Took it down a little bit lower. He says, but I expect it to close higher. And by golly, uh, he was right. In fact, as soon as it turned up on the day, Last night he gave me a call and said, uh, I think you got a winner here. And it, so, hey, this is not a winner. <laughs> we got an hour to go before the close, so it doesn't really mean very much. But I think the main thing today uh, to take away from all this stuff is uh, the stock market. Let's get this. And, you know, I'm just an ABCD person. I don't do much Elliott Wave. Uh, much Elliott Wave, that's the understatement of the year. And the fact that Mr. Elliott and I have the same birthday the 28th of July, different years, of course. Anyway, you can see the big ABCD that we had up here. You can see the ABCD Gartley that hit today right on the low. And folks, that's where I we had a beautiful 135 pattern. I covered shorts, but I did not go long, unfortunately, because it's rallied, you know, 40 handles from that bottom. And if it closes above there, and if it closes above there, which it certainly can, then you're going to be looking at something that could be, you know, really, really quite spectacular. But that's a long way down the road. All I do know is if you look up here at this big top up there that we had there at that 70, uh, 71 level, that's the big ABCD. If we ever get above that, then that's going to be a bullish market. In fact, the market folks, is acting incredibly bullish given the fact that these banks are in such big trouble. Deutsche Bank today down 12% at one time. Now, maybe it's all baloney and smoking mirrors, but as Rich was talking about, the Fed put in something like 2 or $3 trillion in this past week just to you know make the window available for everybody, and they were using it. 
And like he said, that was more than the whole 2008. So that's you've got to pay attention because they don't tell us the whole truth, folks. You know that as well as I do. They give you little bits and pieces of information. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad, but they never tell you the whole truth. They can't because that's how they make their operations. When you have the Secretary of the Treasurer come on and say, well, everything's okay with the banks. We've heard this before. You remember Ben Bernanke in 2007? There's no problem in the real estate market. Go online and check it out. Go look, October 19 or 2007, and you'll see his comments. He said he could see no red lights, only green lights, is what he said. It's something to that nature. And, hey, I, listen, I am not bad-mouthing anybody because I make more mistakes than all these dudes combined. But I try not to stay stay with the you know the bad ones, and that's the that's the real key to you know what I'm looking at here. So I hope that that makes some sense. But you know that's the, what I'm looking at here today is is quite important for the soybean market, and it's also important for the stock market, most specifically for the stock market, because if we should close badly today, below that uh, 39 uh, 40 level, that tells us that we are looking at something that is going to be pretty pretty nasty on the downside. Uh, we hear bits and pieces of information from people at Bloomberg that there's all kinds of things that retaliation by the Russian government for us blowing up the uh, their their uh, Norwegian uh, Nordic pipeline or whatever it was. And, uh, you know, there was only three people could blow up that pipeline, folks. One was Russia, one was us, and one was China. Nobody else has the technology to do it from what they're saying on Bloomberg. They had a general on there today, two to two or three days ago, saying, it was one of us. It's just one of these three people, and he didn't say it wasn't us. But I don't know. That's political stuff. I could care less about. Let's talk about a couple of charts here now that I think uh, make a lot of sense. I want to. I want to give myself a little accolade here because uh, we got a lot of flack from the folks with laughter and stuff when we wanted to buy the uh, gold here this week, down there at that uh, 1940 level. Uh, that was a 382 retracement. The low was 1937. We rallied up to 204. And uh, now we have our stop setting at 1980. So we're going to lock in about $4,700 uh, if we get that. Because if we don't close really good today, then you, you probably want to uh, be a little bit careful. Because this, this big number that we had up here was, uh, you know, it wasn't a new breakout into new high ground. Uh, excuse me, it was a new breakout in a new high ground, but not with the old contracts. Remember, we hit we hit 2,000 and uh, 2,100 or something like that. Uh, 20, I don't know. All I know is it's, a, it's just a few dollars off. This could be a, a possible major double top. Do I think it's a major double top? Absolutely not. I don't think that for a minute. All I can say is that that's probably – what is happening as we as we look at some of these things unfold? Our guest at the break is going to be Jim Bartoleone of Bart's Charts. He's going to be talking about some of the things that uh, you know he's really good at. But I wanted to bring this uh, chart up to you. This came from the uh, folks from the Elliott Wave. Uh, were kind enough to send it out to a lot of people, and someone forwarded it on to me and asked me if I would discuss it here on the air. And I'm going to do that because. I will get this up here and take a quick look at it. This is right out of Elliot's book. In fact, it's right out of the Gartley book, if you want to know, and it's also out of Wyckoff's book. Folks, everything is based on the ABCD. Starting it right in the middle at the top, you see that big ABCD? You see these ABCDs on the upside? That's what I do. I do ABCDs. I do three drives to a bottom. I do three drives to a top. I do double bottoms. I do Gartley's. They're all related all came out of the Gartley book, 1937, for the cost of $1,500, which was the cost of three Ford automobiles at that time. And uh, it was reprinted by Billy Jones at the uh, Lambert Gam Publishing up in Pomeroy, Washington, back in 1983, because Billy had been my customer at Drexel for about five years, and he wanted to do something. And we got the people at the old Gartley family to release the rights, and he Copied the whole book, and it's got some huge charts and everything. If you want something for your library, uh, I know I know you can get it for about $135 with the charts and stuff. But boy, I'll tell you, pages 200 to 250 were life changing for me, folks. Especially page 222, where the Gartley relied on, and that's that's what I'm looking at here. So, I hope this uh, helps you, folks. And we're going to have uh, Mr. Bartoleone on just a few seconds here. But we got one more uh, question that someone had here, and that was about the uh, natural gas 
uh, contract. And if I'll get this up here, I wanted to show you where we still think that we're, we're, we're fact is we got down below our price level. We're still waiting for some type of a reversal pattern here. I'll bring it up here. This was from our chart last week. We thought it was going to get down to that level, and we did went a little bit below it. But, uh, you know, we're still waiting to see if we can get some type of a pattern where we don't have to risk very much at all. And this thing is, jumps around a lot, so we keep it as uh, close to the vest as we can. Because if you keep your friends close but your enemies closer, you're better off. And your enemy is, folks, not using money management. Who loves you, baby? We'll be right back with Jim Bartleone, March Charts. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text, either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free! Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks. I believe we have Jim Bartoleone Larry, on the line. Good morning. Jim, how are you? Good today, afternoon, my wherever you are. Good afternoon, wherever I am. I'm out on my G7, getting ready to fly to Switzerland to buy fresh chocolates. No, I don't. <laughs> I don't like flying. Hey, Jim, you gave yes, us sir. that wonderful trade of short the banks about three and a half weeks ago, and now you're talking to us about this uh, chart on inflation. What What are you looking at here, buddy? Yeah. So, you know, Larry, I was just, I just, it's all the patterns, right? And um, so I, I took a look at the uh, Elliott Wave um, pattern specifically. I was watching a little bit before we came on uh, a triangle. And so I love TradingView. We talked about it before. I'm not getting paid by them or anything. I just love their data. So this is interest rates going back to 1917 or 1913. And um, it, it's formed a perfect triangle, uh, you know, A, B, C, D, E. So, 
technically, um, it, it should be on its way up. And what's amazing to me is, again, and you taught me this, right? You have all these news people and all these articles and all this stuff. It banged right into a trend line. <laughs> I mean, come on. It's incredible, yeah. right? So yeah. um, now we know where the line in the sand is, right? And then you can see if we get down to, I think it's about 4.9 or so. Um, I got my thing in front of you. Hold on a second. What's that? About 4.3 or something like that. Uh, we might have some support. And, and so, hey, as long as we keep below that trend line, let's say life is good for now, right? So um, what I'm trying to do is kind of present a mosaic of how we got to where we are right now, right? Mm -hmm. And so, you know, inflation took off. Um, and it could be a continuation pattern where, where inflation just spikes through that trend line and off it goes. But we'll have to wait and see. So I'm just trying to say, that E down there um, at about 2000, what, 18, 2000, what's it look like, 2011, it's just small here. Um, that was the beginning of a trend. And um, perhaps inflation's off to the races, I don't know, right? But yeah. we can chart it, so we can yeah. make you know, decisions about it. So that's all I'm trying okay. to say there. The other one you've got here is the 10-year uh, yield. You want to talk to us yes. about that? <laughs> sure, so, you know, when, when we take a look at the um, interest rates, right, and, and people are like, how did we get here? And, and you know, it, well, we just got to take a look. And it took 40 years, right? And so this is the interest rate since 1913. And it's a log scale also. So remember that. So these moves are in percentage terms. But essentially, interest rates went up about 700 percent. And it took 40 years to do it. Most recently, you know, they talk about, well, you know, how, how in, in, in the terms of a chart, how big is this move? Well, we did almost the exact same rise in interest rates, over 700 percent in two years. So mm -hmm. when people start looking at the banks and try to figure out, you know, how they got caught with the interest rates rising so quickly, it, it's it's unbelievable. Right. Again, it took 40 years for interest rates to rise this high in percentage terms. And we just did it in two years. So number one, I think the trend in interest rates is up. That's that's a pretty big a, a decade or maybe a hundred year single reversal candle right there, right? Um, so, so, you know, as we look at what's happening with the banks, take a look at what we just showed with regards to the interest rates, and then take a look at what we just showed with inflation. So then you get to the banks, right? Yep, there's the banks. And Jim, I sent this to the Museum of Art in New York, and they're, they're taking down one of the Renoirs and putting this up. Honestly, God, so, I'm, not, I'm not joking. I, I swear to you. You know me, I'd never lie to you. Oh, no, 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 not at all. <laughs> but Larry, you know, what was I on, like three weeks ago or so? And I was like, hey, Larry. Yes, sir. There's yes, a great sir. bank sale, a uh, Gartley yeah, sale coming in. Boy, if you it did. works, you things did. aren't yes. very good. And bam. Not but, only Jim. Yeah. Not only did it work, it worked big time. I mean, look at these right. stocks. And bank of America, Wells Fargo. The only bank that's holding up relatively well is our Goldman Sachs, which is an investment bank, and also J.P. Morgan. The, look at Bank of America is making new lows on the last 18 months. I mean, something's wrong. But some, something ain't right at the Circle K, as we used to say. But do you have the other chart, the next chart with the um, log scale? Oh, yeah. Is that I, I don't. I keep them all. Are you kidding huh. me? These are these are like these are like little treasures. Yeah, well, this is the one that you sent us. I remember. Let's get this up because I, I had so many people say, if you don't have him on again, I'm not going to listen to your show anymore. Well, I'm and all I over said, the place, well, Larry. In fact, we'll have to talk about where I'm going next week. I'll have to come back on the show when I'm done. No, no, we got um, plenty, so, of yeah, time. So, so, plenty of time. So, um, that's that's the one. That's the normal one. We're, the, put up the the next one with log scale because I want to show people okay. like they say, okay, Goldman Sachs, JP, this one, right? So, re reorient yourself. This is a log scale. You can see on the right, you know that that it's logarithmic, and those are measured moves, right? And so you can see that the 2020 um, pretty pretty big collapse from a percentage perspective. We're basically there. Right. But more importantly, we have an ABCD in percentage terms. And then we have so we have a really important level, let's just say in and around 60 bucks. That's extremely important. Right. Mm -hmm. If we break that, things are definitely not good at the Circle K. Yeah. Right. So yeah. I'm not buying banks right now, yeah. um, but the patterns help us understand. And, and like you taught me, it's just an if then. Right. If we break through that, we got the trend line, we've got the measured move percentage correction, we got the ABCD in percentage terms, we have three ratios. It's huge. But when we talk about JP Morgan, Goldman Sachs, they're all fine. 
Well, today, guess what they're starting to take a peek at? The derivatives market. And so what oh. I put at the bottom of this chart, <laughs> it, this is the derivative exposure of these banks. Yeah. So we blake through that level, man, something ain't right. Yeah. I hope we're totally wrong yeah. and it's a massive those, buy from banks and off they go. <laughs> yeah. Are those numbers at the bottom there, uh, JP Morgan, 54 trillion, Goldman Sachs, 51 trillion, Citibank, 48 trillion, are those all right numbers? Yes, and if you'd like, I can email you um, the, the source I got it from. It's actually from a source of the United States government. And you know what, Larry, I meant to put source at the bottom, but I just forgot. So I'll email it to Thanks. you when we're done. But that's their exposure to derivatives, folks. Holy wow. smokes. <laughs> I mean, it's well, uncomprehensible. Like, well, you know, Warren yeah. Buffett said those derivatives are the weapons of mass destruction. He said that all along, but, you know. We're like, staring like at the, Yeah, well, that's for sure. This could certainly be a, a really, really, really nasty one. Yeah, okay, the all, next one. So for all my fellow humans out there, that is probably one of the most important levels on the planet right now. Right around 60 bucks on the yeah. KBW. So. Yeah, that, that's absolutely for sure. Let's take a look here at this next one, which is uh, natural gas. We'll get this up yeah. here, and we'll yeah. take a quick so look I'm at it. With, and... I'm still long natural gas. Uh, um, that okay. monthly pattern, it was just perfect, right? So, yeah, we've, we've, no. we bounced, which I was like, okay, this is good. And now we're, you know, we're, we would go. I saw it about 227 last time. What's it, what's it trading at now? You know, I don't have my real time in front of me. But, oh, I, I, um, that's not necessary. No, no we don't no, have to worry okay. about that. Yeah, but I'm yep. still long. Um, uh -huh. I'm, I'm looking to hold this thing for a couple of years, quite frankly. So I'm not yeah. really worried about the perturbations, but I certainly wouldn't like it to go through that low because, yeah. Larry, you've taught me this stuff. These monthly patterns, these monthly measured moves, they don't fail often, right? It doesn't mean it's yeah. going to be right, right? You're always managing probability, but this one was perfect in both price and time. So, you know, the probability is that it might bang around here, but man, I, it should get going here and we'll see when. But if not, I'll stop myself out and take a loss. Well, that's uh, what it's all about. It's not how much money you make. It's how much money you don't lose. That's for sure. <laughs> so you're going to stay at, you're going to stay in it for two years or till Thursday, whichever comes first. <laughs> I get stopped out Monday. Right? Hey, listen, we we got to take a little break here, and when you come back, sure. I want to talk to you about a few geopolitical things. Okay? You got it, sir. Yep. Thanks, we'll be sir. right back, folks. Jim Bartolioni of Bart's Charts. He'll be coming up uh, right after we take this small break. I have this timing off by about thirty seconds. Ah, oh, only ten seconds. So we'll be right back, and we'll be talking with Jim Bartolioni, folks. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today 
and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Well, we're back, folks. We're talking with Jim Bartoleone of Bart's Charts. Uh, Jim, uh, on Bloomberg, uh, I think it was two days ago, they had a yeah. uh, admiral or a colonel, somebody on there, one of those uh, military dudes, uh, <laughs> and he was saying, well, he was saying about the pipeline. He said the pipeline yeah. was blown up by some mysterious person, and uh, you know, and Russia's a little upset about it, and they want to uh, retaliate. And the the guy asked him, well, who blew it up? And he said, well, there's only three people who could blow it up. He said, Russia, China, and us. He said, who do you think did it? And he says, I don't know. And so I don't know. I don't want you to comment about that. But if they are going to retaliate, what could they do? I mean, they're not going to use a nuclear weapon, I don't think. But they do yeah. a lot with um, communication. Do you have any feeling about that? Or yeah. So, you know, Larry, um, so I'm actually um, going to be um, flying out of the country, um, not out of the country, but I'm going to be flying west. I'll just put it to you that way uh, next week and going to sit down with some some pretty interesting people. And I'll, I'll definitely call you when I, when I get back and we can talk. But, um, okay. you know, we in the military, we used to call and we still call it near peer, right? Who's a near peer to us? Obviously, China is, um, I, you know, I, I'd put Russia there. But, you know, ultimately, you know, wherever we are from an infrastructure part, you know, logistics part, our military can wage war, unlike any military that's existed in this history, as far as I know, at least, you know, to go, let's go back 10,000 years, right? So um, it's not necessarily a smart thing to get into a shooting war. A kinetic is what they call it, a kinetic uh, war with the United States, yeah. kinetic being missiles and bombs, right? Um, because it, it will, it'll hurt on both sides, obviously, but, um, if you really want to hurt the United States, then it's going to be something like a Nord Stream 2 pipeline. And so there's trillions and trillions of dollars that flow, uh, you know, from London to New York, uh, from New York to Hong Kong. And um, those are undersea cables. And so, I, I mean, I don't know any of this for sure. I'm just saying, if you really wanted to get us, you know, how would you get us? We'll get us financially and try to cut some of those cables. It's not like you get a bunch of dudes in a boat and they go out and get a 30 foot sailboat and go out and just kind of go, OK, the cables are down there and we're going to go blow up the Nord Stream 2 pipeline. It's only capable for, uh, you know, a, a national um, authority or Russia, a China. I mean, it, it takes a lot. Obviously, it has to. Right. Because it's pumping natural gas. So this yeah. is not a, you know, hey, let's go blow something up. This took months and months and significant infrastructure to pull off. And there's only probably two or three countries in the world that can do it. Who did it? I'll leave that unknown. So I I personally think, you know, you got that balloon going over, you know, they, they mapped yeah. our entire, uh, um, you know, probably our electrical grid. So something around the lines of a cyber attack electrically, taking down the electrical grid, taking down um, the financial grid, you know, those yeah. are the type of things that I think. And again, you got to ask yourself, you know, one of the things Donald Trump said when they when I ran down a um, a predator was, hey, I'm not going to bomb Iran because it's just a predator, right? So the other thing too is you look at the scalability of of a response. This Nord Stream two pipeline was a huge deal, right? So whatever, whoever country did that, that's going to be retaliated upon. 
will probably have a huge deal of retaliation. And so it could happen tomorrow, it could happen in years, right? We don't know. These things take time to plan. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm more concerned about our infrastructure. And so that's why, you know, I actually got a call with my family. I said, hey, I, I'm just saying I'm looking over the skies and I'm seeing a cloud. So, hey, let's bring an umbrella to the soccer game, right? So mm -hmm. like you told me before, <laughs> have some cash, right? Yeah. Have some propane tanks, have a generator, have some yeah. water, and maybe, you know, some food. Now, you're not going to be eating like a king, but at least you got some yeah. food. Um, because things are really ratcheting up, and, and you can feel it, you can sense it, and I think everybody knows that. So I don't yeah. want to be the Debbie Downer, but this is truly serious. And, and our, our strike last night on Syria, again, it gets a passing blow. We have, the you know, the attention span of a goldfish now. Um, yeah. We bombed Iran, right? Iran attacked yeah. us. Those were yeah. Iranian drones. We we attacked Iranians in Syria. It's things are ratcheting up. That's you know. And then you know, I spent a lot of time flying off the coast of Iran. I spent weeks, if not months, in Saudi Arabia. I never thought in my lifetime there'd be a peace brokerage between Iran and Saudi Arabia. Oh, by the way, done by China, right? So it's yeah. like something ain't right is a circle k right so maybe maybe cheese <laughs> pulling a so hitler sure. and being really nice to france yeah. and then he invades him i don't yeah. see that happening right but uh, jim things, this is why this, yeah this is why i'm a technician pal if the prices are exactly. going up they're buying the prices are going down they're selling that's all i need to know uh, that inside information never worked from hey anybody on the banking index <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna call you the first day that natural gas goes limit up okay Please, no, we'll have you. On. We'll have you on. Hey, when you. you get back from your trip, when you get back from your trip, we'll have you on. Maybe you can give us a, a skinny on what's going on. Okay. I'll do the best I can, Larry. Thanks. Have you a always, great weekend, hey, everybody. Thank you. Tell the family I said hi, Bart. Oh, we you love bet. having you here, buddy. Yeah, love Thanks, you, Bart. See you love later. Bye-bye. Yeah, bye-bye. Okay, folks. Uh, Jim Bartoloni of Bart's Charts. I had four of those dudes. I had Rooster, who was the Top Gun. I had Bart. I had Jeff, and then I also had Bucky. And Bucky's my. Uh, my favorite story is because Bucky uh, was the youngest of the Top Gun uh, uh, group of that uh, squadron they were in. I, I taught Jim first, and then Jeff, then Rooster, and then Bucky. And Bucky was in uh, Florida, and he got a job to go to Kuwait to, uh, to teach the Kuwaiti how to fly the, uh, the F-18s for the, the Kuwaiti Air Force or Navy or Air, Air Force. Uh, Navy, Navy. And uh, they do have a Navy. And anyway, uh, his wife says, she says, there's no way I am going to Kuwait. So he talked her into six months. He said, if you go to six months and you don't like it, we'll come back. Well, first of all, they put him up in a mansion. She had a butler, a cook, a maid, and uh, I, I don't, she had everything. Whenever she wanted to go shopping, they put her on a private plane and sent her to Switzerland. I mean, it was incredible. She was treated like a princess. At the end of the first year, he had a chance to sign a three-year contract, and she says, if you don't do it, I'm going to stay here by myself. And he's still there, uh, working with the Air Force there, and uh, still having a lot of fun. Their kids are in college now, and they're going to college in Europe, of course. But anyway, that's how it goes. Anyway, there's a few of the dudes that I've met over the years. I had a lot of fun uh, with them, and uh, they're really, really fun guys, too. Uh, when my cousin got married in uh, Annapolis, they set up the uh, – he was a cadet – and uh, as a cadet, you don't get the get the wedding unless you're a senior, unless you're a graduate. And but the, because I had a, an uncle who was in the Navy uh, at the cadet at the uh, academy, and Jim was there, and Rooster was there, uh, we got to use the naval chapel and everything, and the family got to go. And God, it was awesome with the so, the swords and the whole bit. It was uh, it was really uh, really awesome. Just about as incredible as you could possibly get. So anyway, we're going to take a little break here. I understand that the market is rallying like a stripe of deer. Let's just check and see if we still are. And yeah, we read up, we made it, got all the way up to 39.90, backed off just a little bit. So we're going to see if uh, this market's going to close strong today. It's going to be interesting, that's for sure. Uh, crude oil still down a little bit today. Gold, uh, believe it or not, folks, I didn't think we had a chance of being stopped out of that gold, but uh, we had a stop in there at uh, 39, excuse me, 1980. Uh, that locked in a big uh, profit for us because we bought it at 40. So uh, that may be the bottom. I'll tell you, I can't, I can't do the whole thing, but I was going to do the, uh, I can see something that I did wrong right here, right now. So hold on. Let's just look at it together because as I'm doing this, I want to show you what I'm looking at. So we'll be right back. 
If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Okay, folks, I wanted to show you this is the gold chart. Uh, this is where we bought it down here on the left. That was the 382 on the long term daily. And what I did was after this double top uh, happened today, uh, I sent out a you know an alert saying if we go below 78% of that, it's best to you know stand aside. So we locked in a really nice profit, and the market's gone a little bit lower. Uh, it went a little bit below the 382. This was the 382 of the previous move. There was the second one. There was the third one. This was the first one right down here. So with this double top up here, maybe this is going to be a significant top in the. Uh, in the gold but you know it's still quite a bit early those are the main things to pay attention the big thing today folks without any doubt in my mind is this one that i'm going to bring up to you right now that i've showed it to you before but i'll show it to you again because it's that important and we want to get this up here so that you can take a look at it that's the stock market showing you the uh the gartley pattern that happened here this morning now but we've been able to rally but all we've been able to rally so far is a 382 retracement of the high that came in right around 3990. So if we can close above that 3990 level, 
then you certainly want to uh, expect possibly another ABCD to the upside. But frankly, folks, uh, this this high that we made here on Thursday with that big ABCD there, that to me is a line in the sand because if we ever do get above that, uh, we could see 4,200 in the S&P without any trouble at all. And what it would be caused by? People buying the banks because the banking crisis is over and they said it was smoking mirrors. And if you believe that, I still have two shares of the Brooklyn Bridge waiting for you here in Tucson, Arizona that you could purchase at a very, very uh, small price. Now, I'm going to be doing the next show uh, from a segment that used to be handled by old Mr. DW. Sell when you want to, not when you have to. We could go today. Can you believe it already? See you in a few hours, next hour. 